Hi guys, this is David Coleman from WP Mayor. Today we're going to look at an event creation and management plugin called WP Event Manager. You can get the plugin at WordPress.org. It's a lightweight, scalable event management plugin, and it includes short codes and it works with any theme. They have demonstrations, add ons, which are premium plugins, good documentation has a good rating, many features, fully responsive, SEO friendly, event categories and types, caching, and many more features. Here's a look at the premium plugins, the add-ons that it offers. You can have Google Maps for location, you can register attendees, sell tickets through WooCommerce, it allows event alerts, you can contact organizers, send emails, and much more. It has an FAQ and very good documentation. Let's click over to the developer website. You can download it here as well. Many features, easy to use, search and filter, powered by Ajax, fully responsive, cross-browser compatible, SEO friendly. You can submit events on the front end. You have different demos, a simple demo and a customized demo. Support is very extensive. As you can see here, getting started, tutorials, add-ons, short codes, advanced documentation. Let's take a look at installation and setup for WP Event Manager. Go to Plugins, Add New. Let's type in WP Event Manager. Here's our result. Click Install Now, and then Activate and they have a setup wizard which is really nice. It allows you to quickly and easily set up front-end pages for event creation, listing, and management. So you just click that button and the plugin offers to create these three pages for posting on the front-end with the short code. So you can post an event, change the title, manage an event, and list them. So you can check on or off which pages you want. You can do it manually, but I recommend keeping all these pages because by pressing the Create Selected Pages button, you can automatically create a event system for the front end of your WordPress site. And once you do that, the plugin gives you recommendations of where to go next. And we're going to decide on our settings a bit later, but let's look at the new menu created, Event Listings, and you can see the different submenus. And also we'll take a look at the pages that were just created. We have the event dashboard, events, which is a listings page, and a post and event page. And this is all for front end users. So let's check out the settings menu for the plugin. We'll go to event listings, settings, and you have four tabs. We're in the general tab. We want Bootstrap enabled for a front end and back end for mobile compatibility. You can get a Google Maps API key for your locations. To do so, just click this link and just click get a key. And I already got a key. So you can go ahead and select something like API project, next. And normally it would give you a key It says something went wrong because I already did this and I previously received a key. So then you would copy it in this space and hit Save Changes. Now the settings in this tab pertain to your event listings page, the number of listings, canceled events, whether you want to show expired listings or content from expired listings, categories, you want to check that on, event types, check that on, whether you're selling tickets, multiple category selection possibilities, and same with types, category filters, event type filters, and your date format. The event submission tab is for posting events on the front end, whether you require an account, usernames, passwords. You can select the account role. You can moderate new listings, allow multiple banners, delete expired listings. Lots of options here. Registration method for new users and more. Click Save Changes when you're done. 
The Pages tab shows the location for the three front end pages that were created after you installed the plugin. And you can change where those ended up. You can also, as I said, have made those manually. And then click Save Changes. Let's add an event from the back end of WordPress. We'll go to Event Listings, Add New, put in your event title. Let's paste in some information here. You can format it however you wish. These are the details of your event. Event data, view count, we'll skip that event title. We'll put in a venue name. Pin code is for India. Event banner, 12 hour format for time. It gives you social media links, start time, end time for the event. Price if you're selling tickets, $300. Registration deadline, it pops up a little calendar here. You can put in a logo for the event the contact person for the event, the website if you have one, a video if you have one, social media contacts, you can make it a featured listing if you wish, registration email or URL, is it an online event? No. Put in the address for the venue, the location of the venue, a description of the venue if you wish, start date, and an end date. For the actual event, ticket options, we'll say paid, link to event page if you have one, organization name, description of the organization, email for the organization, tagline for the organization, and canceled listings, options, a date for the expiration date of the event. And then of course you want to add a category here for the event. We'll call it self-publishing, a type. We're going to call the type Boston Convention. Add new. You can set the logo here too. Hit publish. And let's go take a look. And you can see it's pretty nicely presented. You can register for the event or view more details. You can view a video. I got the sound off here. By the way, uh, none of these events in this demonstration are real, so no events were harmed in the making of this video. Close that up. Ticket information, where and when the event is, the registration end date, a website for the organizer. You can share the event, and here's all your information. You can go in and edit this at any time. Click on the Boston, Massachusetts link and it gives us the Google Maps because we put in that API key. Okay, let's look at the All Events page or the Event Dashboard. Go under to Event Listings, All Events. And I've created three events in this demo site. You can check different statuses, whether they're canceled or featured or active. You have the event titles, banners, the event types, event categories, their locations, the organizer information, post-it date, end date, expiration date, and actions over here you can view the event and it shows you the single event page. You can click the edit button to go back and edit the event at any time. You can also delete the event. You can add events here, do different bulk actions, approve events, expire events. You can filter according to different dates or different categories. Or look at the WordPress event. We can do searches for different events. We can search for the WordPress event. Let's look at the field editor for the plugin. And so you can do front end form fields and back end form fields. You can change the field label name. You can change the field type. Many different field types in this drop down menu here. You can change the description or placeholder information, whether a field needs to be validated. 
We can move and drag these fields so they are in different orders within the front end. You can do, again, different types. We're doing organizer field information here. You can delete fields. And of course, save any changes. Back end form fields have basically the same information. You can drag, and this is how they're presented in the order that you drag them into. Let's look at the event types and categories. Now, event categories and event types here are normally not listed. But if you go under event listings here and in your settings, make sure that they are clicked on. Let's click them off to show you what I mean. When you click them off, they are no longer in the menu. So I advise to click them on, save those changes. And here you can go and create your own event categories. Slugs should be lowercase. And as well, you can create your own event types. By the way guys, event categories are subjects like WordPress, self-publishing, music, science. Event types is how you're learning, such as seminars, conferences, webinars, training videos. And then once you do that, when you go create your own event, let's go and edit one of these. On the right column here, you'll see you have the opportunity to select an event category and an event type. Let's look at WP Event Manager's add-ons. These are premium plugins that range in price from $19 to $39. Just click Add-ons. They currently have 18 plugins to choose from, including an event calendar, a Google Maps plugin for event location, a registration plugin, a plugin for selling tickets, a plugin for gathering attendee information, or doing paid listings through WooCommerce. You can have recurring events. You can send out event alerts based on keyword, location, keyword, categories. You can bookmark events. You can set up event widgets without using any code. You can show events with sliders, including carousel sliders. You can use event tags for better searching. It has Eventbrite integration. You can manage organizer lists. You can contact organizers through a contact form. You can export event information for transfer or backup. You can show events on iCal or other calendars. You can use Google reCAPTCHA to fight against spam. And when you click on a plugin, you'll get further information, including personal and developer pricing, documentation, and more. Let's take a look at the three front end pages that were created automatically after installation of the plugin. So let's go to pages and let's look at the three pages. We have post an event. We have the events page for listing and the dashboard. Now this is for users and registered users who come to our website. And of course you have to sign in with an account to be able to post an event. And so here's an example. Basically it has all the same information as the back end posting page. And you can preview your event before it goes live. Now this is the events listing page. You can search by keywords, location, date, you can choose categories and event types. So here we're looking at our Boston event. And we can pick any date. Let's clear out the location. It shows all events. We can go by type. We can look at either a grid module or a list module. And then when you click on the event, it takes you to the event page. Now let's look at the event dashboard. Again, when you click on the event, you go to the event page. You can take certain actions such as editing the event, 
canceling, duplicating, or deleting the event. So when we click edit, we need to sign in with our account and password, and then we can go in and edit, and it has basically all the features that it has on the back end. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at the three widgets that come with the plugin. So it includes the recent events widget, upcoming events, and featured events. And so you can just drag them in anywhere where you have a widgetized area. You can choose your title, number of listings to show, ascending or descending order. With the upcoming events widget, you have the same options. And the recent events widget gives you a couple more options. Title, keyword, you can set your location, the number of listings you want to show, and the order. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I think WP Event Manager is a really nice plugin, and it has a lot of options, especially with the premium add-ons. I think it's going to meet the needs of small to medium-sized businesses. And again, with the add-ons, it can meet the needs for larger organizations as well. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is David Coleman for WP Mayor.